Halo Combat Evolved is one of my favorite shooters of all time. It was the first game I booted up on my original Xbox the night I got it. I had that thing pre-ordered for six months. And I still get hyped for anything new Halo thanks to my memories from this game. Even if some of the new games weren't very good. But how much do you actually know about the first Halo game? What is up everybody? Chaos here. Welcome to a new series on the channel. This is the series where we break down facts, secrets, unknown things about games you love. And today is 15 facts about Halo Combat Evolved that you may have never known. The goal of this video is for you to walk away saying, wow, I didn't know that. So you let me know in the comments where Halo CE ranks on your list of Halo games. Drop a like. Make sure you have your notifications on, turn your YouTube notifications on, therefore, your Team Chaos notifications can be turned on as well. Take a second, let that original Halo music immerse you, and here we go. Out of the gate, Halo launched in late 2001, everybody knows that, but the first prototype of the game dates all the way back to 1997. Bungie was a 15-person company at that time, and while they were working on another game, three of their developers started working on a sci-fi military game. The original version was a real-time strategy game played from an isometric perspective, and the original title, are you ready for this, was Monkey Nuts. However, after one of the developers was embarrassed about telling his mother the title, it was changed to Blam. Now, despite starting as an RTS, it didn't take long for Bungie to realize that wasn't the best setting for a game like this. The original vision for Halo was very similar to what it ended up being, so they wanted big landscapes, beautiful visuals, epic combat, and an awesome soundtrack. During development, Bungie decided to experiment with camera angles, and at one point, they tried linking a third-person camera to each of the individual units on the battlefield, so you could see what they were all doing. Now, this was enough for them to realize that Halo would work much better as a shooter, not an RTS. So the project shifted from strategy to third person shooter. Then as time went on, the game became the first person epic that we all know and love today. Did you guys know the original title of the game was just Halo and it stayed that way for a long time. However, at one point, Microsoft decided they needed a subtitle on it to make it sound cooler for the Xbox. So they came up with Combat Evolved. And apparently, Bungie hated the subtitle, they thought it sounded cheesy, and it took away from the vibe of the game overall. Thankfully, the game still ended up being successful, and Microsoft backed off from the naming department going forward. And I, now that I look at it, I agree. It could have just been Halo. So one of the biggest selling points of Halo ended up being its split screen and local multiplayer. But this almost didn't happen at all. Development was rushing to get the game working by the time the Xbox came out, and while Bungie did want to include multiplayer, it was pretty low on their priority list at that time. When launch day was just a few weeks out, some of the devs threw together the multiplayer mode and actually got it working. Xbox Live wasn't ready for the public yet, but the local multiplayer was a huge success and it almost never happened. Could you imagine if Halo didn't have any multiplayer at all? Now let's talk about Master Chief. Not even Bungie knew what Master Chief was going to look like and they actually threw in an Easter egg regarding this. As many of you know, the final cutscene of the Combat Evolved campaign, spoiler alert, shows Master Chief sitting down and taking his helmet off, but the camera is positioned so you can't see his face. However, shortly after the PC release, people figured out how to reposition the camera in this cutscene so they could actually see what's underneath Master Chief's helmet. And you know what's there? Guess what? Another helmet. <laughs> Very, very clever on Bungie's part. Next up is a common misconception about Halo CE, and it's that it was a giant success on day one. This wasn't true at all. The game did sell well after launch, but it didn't really show true franchise potential for quite some time. Now, thankfully, the game continued to sell well for months and months after launch, proving to Microsoft that the series had some staying power, and through the internet and the word of mouth, Halo became one of the most discussed games in the world, which contributed to the hype surrounding Halo 2. Now, Halo CE hit 1 million copies sold in 2002, 3 million by mid-2003, and 4 million by early 2004. So it didn't really blow up right away. But people kept on hearing about it, buying it, and playing it. And at one point, Microsoft even stated that over 50% of Xbox console owners had a copy of Halo. Now let's touch on the music, the iconic menu music of Halo Combat Evolved. It was actually composed by the legendary Marty O'Donnell, but it was sung by a group of Gregorian monks. 
That's right, Gregorian chant is a style of choir singing that dates all the way back to the 8th century and has since evolved and become commonplace in modern Catholic and Christian churches. O'Donnell reportedly wanted the music in Halo to feel ancient but epic, and he had to come up with a melody for the iconic chant while he was humming in his car. And I'll tell you right now, they knocked it out of the park. He was going for ancient and epic, and the Gregorian monks, they delivered. Speaking of music, there is actually an Easter egg that references the pop punk band Green Day in Combat Evolved. When you're going through the edit game types, the menu, you will eventually come across a picture of a Spartan with descriptions of each piece of armor they're wearing. Now, most of these are totally normal, but one of the description reads, sometimes I give myself the creeps. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me, which are lyrics to Green Day's song, Basket Case, which was one of the biggest songs of the mid nineties. Another armor description simply reads, all your base are belong to us, which was a reference to an infamous English translation of an arcade game called Zero Wing. Now let's talk about the elites in Halo Combat Evolved. They have some pretty great voice lines, the best one being Wart Wart Wart. But did you guys know Bungie didn't actually come up with a language for them and they weren't just speaking gibberish either? When designing the sound of the elites, Bungie simply took some of the marine dialogue, played it in reverse, and then either sped it up or slowed it down. Now later Halo games would give the elites their own consistent language, but in the original game, that wasn't the case. It was much, much simpler. And speaking of the Marines, while Bungie was coming up with the names for each one of them, they decided to pay homage to one of their favorite sci-fi movies, Aliens. Aliens was directed by James Cameron. It was released in 1986, and it pretty much set the standard for what a sci-fi military movie would be and would be moving forward. And since many of the Bungie developers were fans, they decided to name a bunch of the Marines after the Marines in the movies. So the next time you replay Combat Evolved, Keep your ears open so you can hear what each Marine is named because I promise you most of them come from the Aliens movie. At number five, speaking of the Aliens films, there's actually another reference to the franchise, this time to the first movie, Alien, from 1979. When you are roaming around the Pillar of Autumn, you can find a bulletin board with a whole bunch of announcements formed on it. One of these forms reads, Lost. Calico Cat answers to Jonesy. This is a direct reference to Alien in which main character Ellen Ripley has a calico cat named Jonesy, who she loses track of a couple times throughout the film. Now, despite it being Bungie's creation, Bungie had nothing to do with the 2011 remaster. Combat Evolved Anniversary was developed by 343 Industries as well as Saber Interactive, the team behind the Battle Los Angeles game, as well as the RIPD, the video game. And thankfully, they did a lot better on this game than those because those were crap. And CE Anniversary was a big success. Now, following the good reception, Saber Interactive was brought on as an assistant developer for the entire Master Chief collection on Xbox One, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now let's talk about Cortana. Have you ever wondered why sometimes Cortana uses British slang but doesn't speak with an English accent? That's because in the original drafts of the script, Bungie wanted Cortana to have an English accent, but later in development, they decided against it. However, it was too late to rewrite her dialogue, so there are a couple instances in the campaign where she uses British slang despite speaking with a very true American English accent. Now let's touch on Halo and its history with PC. When the game started development, it was going to be a PC exclusive. Then it was going to be on PC and Mac. Then Microsoft bought them out and made it an Xbox exclusive. Then they announced it would be on Xbox and PC, but there were a few weird quirks about the PC version. That version of the game didn't come out until almost two years after the Xbox version, and that's because the engine it was built on with the Xbox it wasn't easily compatible with computers, so Bungie needed help. They brought in Gearbox software to port the game over the PC, and this version was released in September 2003. Now, interestingly, the PC version of Combat Evolved was actually the first Halo game to have online multiplayer. This version also had a handful of exclusive guns and vehicles, which were supposed to be in the Xbox version, but they had to be cut due to time constraints, all which ended up coming to Halo 2 and 3 on the Xbox. And finally... One of the early storyboards for Combat Evolve actually, actually shows a plot point that would end up being used in 343's Halo games. Each version of the campaign involved Cortana going insane after being plugged into Halo's control room, at which point she would become the new villain. Now this idea didn't last too long as Bungie wanted Cortana to be your companion and did not like the idea of her betraying you, so they made Guilty Spark be the one who goes power crazy. However, this idea of Cortana going mad over power would later be explored in 4 and 5 by 343 Industries to somewhat polarizing reception from the community. But I think it's safe to say Bungie made the right call by scrapping this plot point 
in the original Halo. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 15 interesting facts about Halo Combat Evolved that I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you found informative. It, it, it is a defining game throughout video game history. I mean, it, it set the precedent for FPS games. You guys let me know if you enjoyed, drop a like, and I'll see you soon.